Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We have a mirror match for you guys today. I'm playing against a fellow Union. We're both playing as Blue Dragons. Very different takes on it though. I tend to favor sort of Radar AA and, uh, well, sort of a more mechanized approach uh, to the faction than he does. So we'll have to see how that works, but I have a very aggressive start here on my right hand side, pushing a Ninja and Tukshan Sa and a UH-60P up that way. A slower push up toward Alpha, and this is risky. I've seen motorized pushes get up here before I can, crossing that little gap with K200s and Hachiki Yushikis. But then we have a large investment in golf as well, so short arrows, infantry leading the way, some ATGM teams, and uh, even a K1 trailing behind. Not the heaviest tank, but I'm relying on those ATGM teams to fight off any sort of aggression. And we have one shot, one hit against the ninja, second shot, second hit, and down he goes. And that is a very expensive loss, 90 point loss for my opponent right off the bat. F1 is coming in to answer though, so we have to get out of the way really quickly, firing in probably the last known position. Bit of a blind bombing run, he didn't quite know where my stuff was, and we get one shot off but no joy, and unfortunately I did see it coming and redirect my troops. In the meantime, the uh, ninja here is going to go after that UH-60P, hopefully before he can drop anything off, and we have also eyes on a closed arrow in Foxtrot. So, it's going to be one of those weird ones. I'm trying to get around the side. I'm trying to deny my opponent access to both Golf and Foxtrot, but a big fight in the woods here. Chumat teams a little too far forward for a close uh, for comfort there. Anything else probably would have been able to kill my Hudao Ren relatively quickly, but I do lose the Kyuroku and the KM900, which is not good, and Suja Buntai fighting in the woods. Um, Hebyung are anchoring my formation, and these guys, I do really like these guys. The Panzerfaust three, of course, is a wonderful AT weapon. And the 15 strength and shock training is good as well, but we also get in a brutal bombing run here, so take a look. Suja Buntai, Hachiku Shikis, and... Oh, I guess it wasn't that bad. Yeah, could have been worse, honestly. Um, but a lot of health damage there to those guys, and now a bit of a misplay as well, as my short arrow was moved up, trying to deny any helicopter reinforcements, and it did just open them up to some KM900s. With the lost track transaxial, uh, transaxial broken, I cannot retreat. And that's going to be a very rough engagement, as I just can't get out of it. And he's basically stunlocked until he dies. But my recon infantry and ATGMs have gotten up on this side. K1's pushing forward, screened by a couple of HMBs. I need more um, scouting here. But the idea was to do that with the Tukjun Sa, which are headed up right now to the woods, trying to get vision over this side of the field. K1 is getting a couple shots, and this was brutal. So one shot and a miss with a closed arrow, which is going to drive right through everything, and then end up killing my UH-60P over here. So... um pretty rough in that regard. Alpha is just a holding force, another closed arrow on this side, and um, Union was telling me this is sort of how he likes to do it, is just scatter IR, AA everywhere across the map and take things out that way, and it is brutal against helicopters, but um, I don't know, we'll have to see how it works out. Tukjun saw almost able to shoot, but they are spotted and can't quite get the Carl Gustavs online. Bit of a mismicro for me as well, they were trying to shoot him with the mini-me, and I should have turned that off and let them go in with Carl Gustav alone, but you know, live and learn, and all that. So Union's taking out a plus two, he has capped Charlie. But this also told me he had fewer forces on the ground, and with a couple successful engagements here, that has given me the confidence to then buy my own CV a little bit later, and take a very aggressive position. So we've moved toward Golf, we've moved up into Foxtrot, and the K1, I mean, relatively on his own here, but we do have spotting now from the Rangers, we do also have a couple of things screening, and if I can get a better con uh, consolidation of Golf, we might be able to push into Foxtrot just that bit more aggressively. Chumat and Hudao Ren are protecting me from an attempt at infiltration. KM900's pretty cheap, and an F1 bomber coming in to get revenge for a uh, quick engagement we had on this side where the, the M67 Han were able to take out a couple of K200s. So, uh, yeah, not, I mean, not a lot of points there, but we did fend off that sort of attempt at infiltration. Hachiku Shikis are also moving over to try and block off this path, if nothing else, as a roadblock unit. And there is an advance coming in on this side in AH-1S this way, and you can see right away I moved my Chumat back, my Rangers back. I was hoping to get them up and into the woods over here, but that AH-1S, those Hydro Rocket Pods, will eat them for breakfast on the open ground. Very much not what I want to see. Hudao Run, able to get a nice kill, but it's just a cheap infantry fighting vehicle, and... My opponent has those in droves. We have also given away our position a little bit, so I'm repositioning the Hudao Ren, trying to avoid another F1 bombing run. Tukjun Sa, I could have tried moving them around and shooting at the AH-1S, but I really didn't want to risk it because it's close enough where those... I mean, yeah, I, I, there was an opportunity, and then as soon as he started lifting off and moving away, I thought better of it and decided, you know what, let's not do this, and let's not lose my forward Tukjun Sa to something that... I mean, the AH-1S here is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. If he had tried to push in, I didn't really have that much AA. 
the infantry themselves are hidden until they be close enough to shoot. So, Kiroku is going to be fending off some Sochung Su here. Look at this. Eight men, five men, three men. Beautiful, beautiful work off that Mark 19. And I've really become a much bigger fan of grenade launchers recently, uh, as the game has sort of shown me that, you know, in the right situations, they can be pretty brutal. And that Kiroku was definitely getting good work done. K1 shooting in here, and we're trying to fend off, it looks like a screening force. Moved back by Union as soon as he sees the forward guns here. ATGM vehicle on the way. It's a Geomot, which does have 26-25 meter range, outranging my K1s. And in response to seeing that, I move the HMVs forward. I'm trying to get those Humvees to eat those Geomots instead of my K1 while he is exposed, and then we'll be moving him back in a second. Recon Rangers are moving forward. I could have probably uh, moved the Chumot forward as well. But with the relatively light hold on the left side of Gulf, I wanted them in here as a deterrent, at least until I could get a Nanayan Shiki G forward and have that sort of comfort in um, at least having a unit prevent infiltration all the way back to Hotel. So this was a vulnerability. It was preventing me from moving up a couple of screening units. Now it's covered, but uh, I don't know. I, I wanted to be a little bit more conservative, have the Chumot stay there. We are now capping Alpha and Hotel, so it's taking out a plus one against my opponent's 70 points here, built up in reserve, but with control of Golf and a central counter cap on Foxtrot, I'm feeling okay. He might cap Bravo, and that is certainly something worth worrying about later on, but for right now, I think it's fine. OH1 Ninja is going to be moving up on the right-hand side, just sort of screening, looking for that, uh, that I think it was an AH1J helicopter? Um, kind of embarrassing, I don't quite recall, but... Uh, Another bomber coming in, another F1, and I do have an F1 of my own. Evac ordered, though. I was going to try and shoot the last known position of those infantry, but they did move away, and now we have a Nani on Cheeky G. My K1 is stunned, bad accuracy off the panic, and this could be bad, so the Chumot are moving forward, trying to get a screening force, and he doesn't even know they're there, which is a good thing for me uh, as well. So, Kiroku's engaging with a KM900, and this is not going to last forever, because there's probably supporting elements this time. First time, I'll do it blind. Second time, maybe not so much. You can see, yeah, that's a tank, and there are infantry, so he's trying to cross the open ground. I would have liked to see smoke here, instead of a sacrificial unit, particularly because these have young, I mean, that's a really expensive unit of infantry, 30 points for that, and they are I mean, injured, they're worried, they're not in prime condition here, and uh, really just a couple of screening, light, uh, cheap infantry like So Chung Su might have been a good way to make sure that those expensive infantry don't get damaged, before they even come in. F1 of my own is coming in, and I was trying to anticipate the movement there, so I mean, leading the duck, but uh, the Hebyung did stop and then move sort of tangentially. Kudao Ren have a nice shot in the Nanayan Shiki G, and very well could have, if not killed it, certainly given it a really big pounding, but unfortunately no dice there, and the Nanayan Shiki does provide the last shot in against Hebyung 90. So, not what you want to see, but my own Nanayan Shiki G is moving up, and of course, a mirror match between tanks would be maybe a little bit risky, but I did want to see off those Hebyung before they got into the woods and the rocket, uh, not rocket, <laughs> the grenade launcher on the top of the Shiki G combined with that fast rate of fire is pretty nice, but it won't be enough as more Hebyung are crossing this open ground and I'm gonna have to do something about it relatively quickly. I did also um, just try and smoke my Nani on Shiki G here, not the most danger from it, but Peace Pheasant 2s are only 90 points, and when they're only 90 points, even those 60-point snacks start to look a little bit tempting uh, on the on the field. I've made that mistake before as well, but I didn't want to lose this guy. And sometimes that 30-point disadvantage for the trade can open up a lot of opportunities, uh, particularly when it's the last tank on a side and you're just calling in a command vehicle. So I realized if I lost this guy, I'm in a bit of trouble, and that's the other reason that the OH-60 is moving forward. So, Hu Dao Ren will not be able to fight off a fresh unit of Hapyong. It's just not going to happen. These guys, of course, um, they are shock infantry, but both of mine are damaged, and I don't have as good uh, capabilities for infantry to infantry as a group of Hapyong. So, short arrow on the right-hand side does sort of start screening out there, and now we're feeling a little bit more well-rounded. So, rangers for spotting, Chu Ma short arrows and all that, and the Hebyung are going to be a little bit brutal, but the OH-60 does save the day here, so one volley down to seven men and panicked, I guess it was eight off the rockets, second volley, two men left in the Hebyung, and now Hu Dao Ren will be able to complete that engagement with a little bit of fire support from their friends. So, you're going to be moving back, trying to stay away from, it looked like a gun tank up on this side, but uh, actually a dive from another F1, shooting in, trying to screen out any infantry here. My rangers are up a little bit too far, and you can see there's a push Coming right across Foxtrot, Chumat are going to take that uh, Nanayan Shiki G. Ooh, no. Uh, kill, oh, easy for me to say. Kill Steal by the K1 does uh, steal that from the Chumat, so 
Uh, I guess they were still pretty nice. They got 9 damage in on a relatively expensive 60 point fragile tank. And now with K200s and Hachikyushikis moving forward, I'm trying to reinforce this woods position as the Chumat also screen out a couple of vehicles and combine with the K1 do a very, very nice sort of action. But I do lose my scout helicopter to a gun tank. And that kind of sucks because I brought in a couple of peace pheasants trying to get some nice kills there. I thought if I could kill the gun tank, I might be able to then use it to kill a couple of uh, vehicles as well. But now we do have aggression in Bravo, which has been capped by Union. Um, of course, this does give a plus one as we still have Golf, but I don't have a lot here. So Chung Su and K200s properly positioned this time. <laughs> K200s behind the So Chung Su ever so slightly so that they'll engage first the tertiaries and then the K200s will start shooting. But Nanyang Shikiji is fending some things off there and you can see that was another transport down and a lot of very, very dead infantry. But this side is going to feel the pain pretty soon. So Hachiki Shiki is actually, what is this? It's getting shot at. Ooh, just too late to see. I guess it was just K200. And we are getting shot at by a tank as well. So here come the Peace Pheasants. I figured now or never, and I have a little bit of a points advantage, may as well go for it. We get a Shiki G, we also get the gun tank and a K200, I believe, before they get out. So a very nice, successful run there. Uh, a little bit risky. We did get hit in the one piece pheasant too, but um, that's kind of okay. And then turning my attention over here, oh 60 is moving out to try and do the same rocket pod support as we had previously, but this is a lot. So So Chung Su, more So Chung Su, force path instead of attack move, and that's a little questionable, but an F1 is coming in to save the day, and let's look at that absolute brutality there as only six So Chung Su are left from that initial volley, and the reinforcements that I called out yeah, they're going to be kind of slow other than the uh, Recon Infantry and the HMV, but uh, yeah, I think this will be probably just fine. More so Chung Su moving up, UH-1H and the Huns screening out those vehicles on that side, and then we have been able to collapse in on the new reinforcing So Chung Su with a lot of Hu Ren and a couple of So Chung Su of my own, supported of course by the ever-present Hachikyu Shikis alive with one health, because I really do just love those transports. Not good armor for the price, and I freely acknowledge that, but uh, they do a lot of other stuff well. So, so Chung Su, nine of them engaging with Habyong 90, and that is going to be a really horrible engagement. But my OH-60 notices, my F1 notices, and let's see, 14 men, F1 coming in, and look at those. Yeah, jeez. Down to four, and uh, cycling, so I think I pull these guys back here in just a second, but yep, there they is, and the fresh unit of So Chung Su will be able to do just fine with a single Habyong 90 remaining. So... This is really, I think, the tale of some integrated fire support making the difference, uh, allowing some cheaper units to win against more expensive counterparts, uh, even inside the same faction. Now, I do lose a Peace Pheasant on that last run, but uh, he's already made his worth back, 120 points in kills at, at the uh, very minimum, and that is going to be a surrender for my opponent as his new Habyung are caught crossing the open field. So, in terms of kills, losses, 950 to 330, not the longest game ever, 13 minutes and 30, 37 seconds, but some units that did well. Uh, Ninja took down some Tuk Jun Sa at the beginning, which is very nice. Hu Dao Ren actually really performed well. Chumat kills, Nanasan Shikis, a couple of K900s, and also just fending things off in the woods there. Uh, as well as the K1 on the other side, no big kills for this guy. But the Nanayan Shiki G combined with the rest sort of makes it worthwhile, and definitely some good work out of the Peace Pheasants and the Hachikyu Shikis allowing me to hold that side in golf. So, uh, that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.